Welcome to me. That was my voice. A little bit of a vomit. Who knows? It's two girls, one pod. Listen to this. It's me moving around. I might say, oh, heaps of times. Oh, God, yes. Getting comfortable. I'm Evie Jones. This is my solo app. That means it's Tuesday. It's been a lovely week. Melbourne, I'm in Melbourne. We finally had heat. Uh, so that's nice. The rest of the country's had rain and heat. The world is a bin fire. Um, I'm on Wurundjeri land, as always. Where else would I be? I have an email, DM, text, carrier pigeon, letter written in an ink quill from a woman called Casey with a K. Evie, she's written a lot of E's. I'm okay with that. I absolutely love the podcast and love listening to you every week. Thanks, Case. Oh, love being in your ear holes. Um, but I also love you on my TV screen. Well, who doesn't? Have you seen this mug? I watched Deadlock. Oh, how good was Deadlock? So good. And you know what? Deadlock just won a heap of awards at the actors. Like, really amazing. And Kate Box, who played the main character, she did. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look at the actor's profile on Instagram and have a look at Kate Box's acceptance speech. It was one of the best I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and thought you did such an amazing job. Well, thank you. I was only on for five seconds, but God damn, I made those five seconds worth it. I was wondering how you got into acting. Did you go to acting school or anything like that? And then do you have any plans to be in any upcoming shows? Would love to see your face on our screens again. Well, you know what? Acting is my first love. It's my passion. It's always has been and it always will be. And no matter what I do, I can't make that go away. And I have tried. I've always acted. Acted at school. I went to acting school. I didn't last in acting school because I have ADHD, um, undiagnosed, well, diagnosed, but no medication. And I have no discipline. I was told that. Have I ever told you this story, Rach, and everyone listening about when I was five, I used to go to ballet from about the age of three, right? I was a very good ballet dancer, very good which is surprising if you look at my body shape. But as a child, I was tiny and very good at any kind of dancing, but I loved ballet. And I used to be taught by an ex-Australian ballet dancer. I was his favourite and he thought I had a lot of potential. Anyway, because this is when um, we owned the corner store in Sydney. And one day I just didn't want to go to class. That seems to be a theme throughout my life from then on. My mum just kept trying to talk me into it. She did this so many times with me, with everything I've ever done and quit. She would say, if you don't go, you can never go again. And I would say, well, I don't want to go today. I would never go again. And I would have that in my head. I will never go again. And so I'd never even try to go again. And I did that with my ballet. I did that with my acting. I did that with um, singing. I did that with so many things. I would just quit. And my mum would let me after saying, well, if you quit, you're never going to go. Like, I'm not, I'm not paying for it. If you're not going to go today, instead of just understanding I didn't want to go that day, I guess parenting is not easy. And my mum wouldn't have known what she was doing But anyway, he came around to our house, well, to the shop, because we lived out the back. And he said, where's Yvette? Why hasn't she been coming to class? And she said, because she doesn't want to do it anymore. And he said, whatever. And she said, well, you know, no, she doesn't. She's just decided she doesn't want to do it anymore. And he said, well, that's a shame because she lacks discipline and she'll probably lack discipline for the rest of her life. And you know what? My mum told me that as a five-year-old. I don't know what discipline was, but I've always thought that. And, you know, even as an adult, even recently, I will say to you that I'm lazy. And I'm not lazy. I'm not undisciplined. Well, I think I am undisciplined, but I've never been taught to be disciplined. I've never been held to, I guess, I'm really glad I didn't have a tiger mum or anything like that because I would have really bucked. I think I buck against authority. But I really am quite good at encouragement. Like, 
I understand where you're coming from and blah, 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 but, you know, you can do this kind of thing. I do understand you don't want to go today. Um, we can't make a habit of that kind of thing. And it's really weird. Like if I wanted a day off school, my mum would just let me have it. There was never any, I'm disappointed in you, let's talk about that kind of thing. So that was through all of my dancing and anything really that I did at school. <laughs> So I did a lot of productions at school and stuff like that. But as I gained weight in high school, I couldn't do any leads or anything like that. They just didn't go to fat kids. So I was always on the outskirts of the play, um, always small roles, doing them very well, but, you know, knowing where my place was. I think that really set me up for, like, going to acting school, you know, you have to audition for all of the schools and everything and... I got in and I think that's what all I really cared about was getting in and thinking I could do it and really convince – obviously, I was a good actor because I convinced the entire school that I was going to have a discipline and go to school, go every day. But when you do acting school at university, it's 40 hours a week and then rehearsals <laughs> if you're doing productions. I didn't last five minutes. Like, honestly, I was like, I'm out of here. I'm going travelling. And I went travelling instead. And my parents just allowed it. Like, not that they couldn't not allow it because um, I was an adult, but there was a lot of, okay, well, you know, that's you. You quit everything. So I, I learned to live that way. And also, I think, not being given any kind of a lead role when I was – in high school really set me up for the rest of my adult life until recently that unless I wanted to play funny fat characters, you needed to lose a lot of weight. And until I did that, I wasn't going to get myself into acting. So I did that and I was a professional singer for a while because, you know, you can do that no problem and whatever. And I did all sorts of intonations of singing, like did jazz and then I was doing a bit of pop and then I was, you know, whatever, like, you know, fronting a, a, a rock band on the Gold Coast at one point. Like it was dreadful. But, you know, I thought I was like Alanis Morissette then. And then I went into my, you know, Great Gatsby stage of singing and, you know, because I could sing all these types of genres, but never really found myself in that. And then I was um, always acting off like um, community, so co-op productions and always doing really, really well, came and went with agents. I used to self-sabotage myself dreadfully, still have that in me, self-sabotage. Um, wouldn't turn up to an audition or I'd f*** the audition up. It was always in the back of my head, you need to lose weight because you can't be seen on TV like this. And it wasn't until Gogglebox happened and I was not – on a show f as an actor or a singer, like I wasn't as a performer and I was really bracing myself. Like, you, you know, when you start Gogglebox, they have a meeting where they say, you need to look at your socials, you need to look at anything that's on the internet that could come back and make you be cancelled basically and remove it. So I removed all my music, removed all my performances, anything that, you know, showed that I was an actor because I didn't want anyone to think that I was, you know, on Gogglebox to become a star and then they said, you need to be really ready for the trolls because they will come. And they never came for me. They just never came. And they still have never come. I don't know why, but I was so embraced from the moment I started on Gogglebox to right now, still so embraced for being me that it changed everything. So that's been 10 years, 10 years this year that I've had – this, I guess, envelopment of people and acceptance that I've kind of nestled inside of and used to find the love for myself. And the only regret I have is that it didn't come earlier, but it didn't. And there's nothing you can do about that. And there's nothing, you know, and I can regret that and I can be sad about that, but I can't change it. And I'm in such a great place right now and I'm acting. I'm finally acting. I used my contacts and networking through being um, on TV as myself. I had casting directors say to me, have you ever thought of acting because you've got great comic timing? And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, I have. And it's my passion. So Deadlock was, you know, 
it wasn't my first. I did Drunk History for Channel 10. I did two episodes of that and wonderfully was only doing one episode when the producer was like, she was really great. Can we get her back to do another ep? And I was like, yeah, we can. And so every time I do any kind of acting, it, it goes really well. So, yes, I'm hoping there's plenty more. I'm I'm trying to get an agent now. I'm in, I'm in talks right now of getting an agent. So once I have an agent, that means I'm going to start going for auditions and I'm not going to sabotage them anymore. I'm going to become a professional actor as well as this, as well as all of the things that I'm doing, but I'm going to, in my 52nd year of life, finally fulfill my childhood dream of being a professional actor. And who knows, maybe I'll be making an acceptance speech at the actors one year, you know, who knows. Until that happens, put it out there, it's out there, done, it's in the ether. Thank you for listening. I hope you're all having a really good week. Thank you, Casey, for asking that. I hope um, whatever you've had in your childhood, do you, have you given up on a dream? Have you given up on a passion? Was there something you wanted to be when you were younger that you never did? Because it's not too late, as my mother would say. You're not dead yet, Dal. I will um, talk to you. Well, I'll be in your e-house on Thursday. We've got the wonderful... An amazing episode this week's Constance Hall. Wow, what a powerhouse. Enjoy. I'll talk to you soon. Mwah.